The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could at least have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with 10. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus teaches that our Father in heaven gives each person talents according to his will, and we are to use these gifts to glorify God. Now, I'm not sure you know what a talent is, but when you hear the parable, you think in your mind that it's a coin, but it's not. It's a unit of measurement. A talent, usually measured in silver, is called a kikarim in Aramaic and it's worth 3,000 shekels. So I did a little math. In today's dollars, one talent is worth $32,256. Oh, 
Oh, now when you think of one talent, a little bit different now, huh? And that's the point. Our Lord Jesus has given us an immeasurable gift, the ability through grace to share his life. And he expects a return on his investment. At the cost of his own life, the Savior of the world has entrusted his possessions to those he has redeemed. And what is this precious gift? St. John gives us the answer. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. God is love. And he who lives in love lives in God. And God lives in him. The Father's love is so great, so powerful, and so real that he can't keep it to himself. God created us so that we can truly experience and participate in that love. God the Father did not hold back his love when he created us. God the Son did not hold back his love for us on the cross. God the Holy Spirit did not hold back his love on Pentecost. Therefore, God expects us to do the same, to make a gift of ourselves to others in love, holding nothing back. Those who jealously guard what they've been given, who hoard God's gift and remain in the shell of fear of being ridiculed for boldly living and sharing the Catholic faith will be thrown into the darkness. How do we prevent this? By remembering four things. First, God gives each person different gifts. Despite our tendencies always to compare ourselves with others, which leads to jealousy and envy, the actual number and quality of the gifts are not important to God. He only asks that we make full use of what we've been uniquely given and to use them for the benefit and enrichment of the church and our neighbors. And that can't start until we start to see people the way God sees them, to look at each other through God's eyes. The key to defeating prejudice and racism is to see our brothers and sisters as God sees us. We need to see the image and likeness of God in each other. I can say unequivocally that it hurts and hurts deeply when people do not see the image of God in you, but only a caricature or a subconsciously projected stereotype. This is the first brick that must be removed in the wall of racism. Now, what do I mean by that? To see each other the way God sees them. See, the problem is we are allowing ourselves to be defined by the culture. People say to me, you are a black Catholic. And I would say, well, I'm a Catholic who's black. <laughs> What's the difference? What? Are you denying your, your cultural heritage? Nope. But when I die and stand before Jesus Christ, he's not going to ask me how black I am. Did you pick up your cross and follow me, even when it was hard? I gave you three talents. Fatherhood, husband, deacon. Where's my 30, 50, 100-fold return on the investment I made in you? That's what he's going to ask. Now, let me be clear. I'm not, I was born in Barbados. I'm an immigrant to this country. I don't deny my Caribbean heritage. I love being black. I thank God every day that I'm black. I love my Caribbean heritage. I love our food, our culture, our music. I love our food, our culture, our music. I still speak my Bajan dialect. But that doesn't define me. I am a son of the living God. I steep my life in the blood of Jesus Christ. It is a divine identity. And
And when we start to see each other that way, now I'm able to appreciate the great gift of culture and language and everything else that goes with making us uniquely human beings made in God's image and likeness. But I have to see God in you first. This will help us to realize the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's yet unrealized dream that all Americans will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Second, our work is never completed. When the first two servants showed how much they had earned, they couldn't just sit back and relax. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Because of their trustworthiness, even greater obligations were given to them. Why? Because God can reach more souls through them for his glory. That is how we appreciate the richness of cultural diversity in our Catholic Church. The diverse cultural heritage of African, Asian, Caribbean, Hispanic, Haitian, Native American can all be sources sometimes of contention and volatility in parishes. Sometimes we fear, just like that guy who buried his one talent in the ground, sometimes we fear what we don't understand or simply choose to ignore people who are different from us. This may cause us to put on spiritual blinders creating a cultural tunnel vision. This may cause us to believe, for example, oh, that's the Spanish mask for the Hispanics. That's the mask for the Vietnamese. That's their mask. Here are a few ways we can overcome that spiritual blindness. One of the things we did in our parish, we, we started holding a series of potlucks in which the entire ethnic communities were appreciated and celebrated. The diversity of food, music, native dress can be an incredible opportunity to learn and to grow. It is no mistake that in the Gospels, Jesus can often be found eating at someone's house. The Lord accepted the invitation of all tax collectors, sinners, Pharisees. Food and hospitality were important vehicles used by Jesus to bring disparate groups together. Sharing a meal becomes an important way of sharing the faith. During those potlucks, and it was interesting, because we, we have Vietnamese, we have people from about seven different African nations, we have Filipinos, and people were trying foods for the first time. And then we had people with diverse ethnic backgrounds share their stories and short testimonies of their experience of being in the Catholic Church. Other parishioners will begin to realize how much we all have in common. And slowly but surely, the parish family will come closer together. The other thing we did, <laughs> Father and I were a little bit hesitant about this, but we uh, cross pollinated the choirs. So we had, the, remember, we had the Vietnamese, the Africans, the Filipinos, so we mixed the choirs. So the African choir sang at the English Mass. And it was great, but when the Africans went to the Vietnamese Mass, you know, Vietnamese are very proper, very uh, beautiful reverence. But then the Africans, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. They were like, oh. oh. <laughs> Maybe too much too soon, Father, you know? <laughs> they experience shock at first. And sometimes, let's be real, people may even often resistance and criticism. That music doesn't belong at our mass. But over time, they will begin to appreciate the authentic and reverent cultural expressions that acknowledge the unique gifts we all bring to the holy sacrifice of the Mass and the entire body of Christ. The last thing we did was add multicultural images of saints in the church. Now, our church, a little Macula Heart of Mary, was German and Irish in the past. And to this day, we still have a beautiful statue of Immaculate Heart of Mary 
on either side, smaller statues of St. Patrick and St. Bonif uh, Bonaventure, the German and Irish patrons of the parish. Now the parish don't look like that. So now we added images of Our Lady of Lavang, an approved apparition of the Blessed Mother in Vietnam. We have St. Martin de Porres, St. Teteri Tetequitha, and now, and now the images in the church look like the people who worship there. Although more subtle, these sacred images counterbalance the negative secular stereotypes of the culture. <coughs> Third, the one who will be punished is the one who does nothing. The man with one talent didn't lose it. And not like he just, like the prodigal son, spent his father's money on wine, women, and song. This guy didn't do anything with it out of fear. If he had tried and failed, he would have at least been met with understanding or compassion or even forgiveness. Should you then not have taken the money and put it in the bank so I could at least got a little interest on my return? The master's point is that he could have at least done something. Even the person with only one talent has something to offer others. It is a sober warning that it is not just those who do evil deeds who will lose everything, but also those who have no good works to show for their efforts. We have to trust much more in the precious gift of God's merciful love than in our own failure. Standing before God and saying, I didn't do anything, will not cut it. The call to advance the kingdom of God here and now means, among other things, that we work toward the day when racism will no longer maintain the grip on our culture that it has had from its earliest days. Looking to this end, one key for success is for the faithful to embrace the Holy Six, the black Catholic men and women currently under formal consideration for canonization by the church. Each of these individuals, Venerable Pierre Toussaint, Venerable Henriette de Lille, Venerable Augustus Tolton, and servants of God, Mary Lang, Julia Greeley, and Thea Bowman, dwelled in Christ's love and reflected it amid a broken world. And finally, to the one who has more, that more will be given. And the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This seems unfair, but Jesus is saying that those who generously share their gifts are likely to find themselves always enriched. Those who save their lives will lose it. Those who generously share what they have with others, who give themselves away in love, will find themselves in God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to think deeply and seriously about where you are in your life right now. Are you using all of your God-given talents to their full potential? Are you fulfilling your purpose on earth by being the person who God created you to be? When we die and stand before Almighty God to be judged, he will ask, what did you do with the talents I gave you? The Lord will not be interested in how much money we made, how many buildings we built, or even our personal accomplishments in this life. The God of love is the husband who entrusts his heart to his wife, the church, and expects her to work with loving hands to extend his kingdom to the poor, the needy, and to those who long for God's healing touch in their lives. Let us not bury our gifts in the ground and hide them from the world. Look, I told His Excellency this morning, I believe with all my heart that the Catholic Church can take the lead in defeating racism. With all my heart, I believe that. 
We just have to say yes and take that big step forward in faith. Let us not be caught off guard, but awake, alert, and sober. Let us multiply our talents for the glory of God so that when the Lord comes, we may hear those beautiful words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Amen.